In today's video, we're talking about Templator in Obsidian. Templator is essentially a much more robust and complex version of the template's core plugin. It can get overwhelming, so while there are no requirements for this video, if you're just starting out with Obsidian, it might be best to go over my Obsidian playlist before watching this video. So what's the difference between the template's core plugin and Templator? The main difference is automation. Templator can apply any template you want based on a ton of different variables, such as the day of the week or what folder the note was created in. It takes longer to set up, that's for sure, but once it's set up, it's a lot more powerful. Templator has a bunch of functionality, and really, I probably don't even use 10% of it. When I first started using Templator, I went through all the documentation, which is beautifully written, by the way, and I adopted only what added value to me, and that's what we're going over in today's video. Templator's functionality is divided between internal functions and user functions. In this video, I'm just going over the internal functions. Templar also gives you access to the moment object, which is out of the scope of this video, but if there's interest, let me know in the comments and I'll happily make a video dedicated to moment and user functions. So let's get started. Okay, so as always, here we are at our mastering Obsidian Vault, and this right here is what we were doing in the last video, which was tracking our long-term quality of life using weekly journaling in Obsidian. So if that sounds interesting to you, make sure to give that a go. I'm going to leave a link to it somewhere on the screen right now. So let's first download the Templator plugin. Mine is probably already installed. Yes, it is. If you don't, come here to Community Plugins, Browse, Templator plugin, Enable, and then come here to Templator Settings. And we're going to leave everything as default for now. We're going to come back to this page later on. So let's open up a new page and let's go over the basics of Templator. I'm going to title this Templator Tutorial. Regardless of what function you're doing in Templator, it always starts and ends the same way. Left arrow, percentage, and percentage right arrow, and your function is going to go in between these two. So let's probably do one of the most common ones in Templar. So we're going to start with TP for Templar, date, dot, now, the year, month, day. The first point of frustration is actually activating a template, because once you input the Templar syntax into your note, you can't just go on to the preview mode and see the results. Instead, what you need to do is press Command P for Command Palette, go on Templar, and come over here to replace templates in the active file. And once you do that, it does it for you. A much easier way is to assign a hotkey to it. In my case, I have mine set up as option R, and you can change that under Obsidian's core hotkey section. So if you come over here to our settings and then hotkeys, and we search here for replace, it's gonna give us template or replace, and you can change this to whatever you want. I have mine as option R. So over here, you can press customize this command, and then you type in your command. So now I can just come here and press option R. Much simpler, right? Now I know what a lot of you might be thinking right now. Why would you type all of this out every single time you want to use Templator? But that's not really the point of it. The point is to have this set up so it gets automatically placed for you based on the parameters that you give it, such as a folder location, hotkeys, integrating it with your journaling, etc. And we're going to go over all of that on the next chapter of this video. But for now, let's just go over the syntax. Now, Templar has a lot of syntax. In this video, I'm just going to show you what I find useful for my workflow personally. But if you have really specific use cases, definitely check the documentation, which I have linked to below. Out of the seven internal functions, I find TP date and TP file to be the ones that I use more frequently. So let's look at some examples for those two. So I'm going to create a new page here. I'm going to call it TP date. And I'm going to copy and paste the function we had on the previous page. So if I do option R, yes, it works. And the first thing I want to show you is another way of displaying this. So for a lot of people, seeing it 2022-07-22 is not really appealing. And Templar has a more user-friendly format. So we can just get rid of this part here. And I'm going to type in DO 4Ms followed by 4Ys. And I'm going to activate it. And now it looks a little cleaner for many people. For me, I prefer the standard way as I've already gotten used to it. And you can also add a TP date for tomorrow or for yesterday. So if I come here and I go back and I do TP date tomorrow and I activate it, we have 23rd July and today is 22nd. In here, I can also put in yesterday and we have yesterday's date. And some of you might already be thinking, why can't we just use the natural language dates plugin, which is the one where you put in at followed by today, tomorrow, two days ago, and it inputs the date for you. And yeah, you can use it this way, but the difference between the two is that this one here is automated. And as you'll see in a bit, once you put both of these into a template and you activate that template, this is going to return you at today, not the actual date. Whereas this will always give you, well, in this case, it'll give you the yesterday date every single time. And that's the main difference. All right, so let's get rid of this one here. And let's now look at syntax for adding dates in the past or future. 
not just last week, but last month or even last year. Let's start by taking today's date. So I'm gonna put in a TP date for now, and I'm just gonna do the YMD version. But now let's say we wanted to pull this exact date, but for June, so for last month. So we can just do a TP date, leave everything else here the same, but then we just add a second one here for P minus one M. So once we come out of this one and we toggle it, option R, you can see that it took June 22nd. So this exact date of today, but for last month. So if you want for two months ago, just put in P minus two. And then once you toggle it on, you have May 22nd. If you want it for two months from now, you just put in the plus sign. So then when I come here and I toggle this on, it's gonna give us September 22nd. So what if you wanna do this, but instead of months, you want it for years. So you come here and instead of M, you just change this to a Y. So in this case, let's say we want the today's date of last year. So in this case, today is July 22nd. We want July 22nd for 2021. In this case, I can just put in minus one Y, come out of this, option R, and now we have July 22nd of last year. All right, so let's now take it one step further. You can take any template or function and turn the result into a link. And this is when it starts to get really powerful. So let's take a look at this example here that we have, and let's actually get rid of this one here because we're not doing much with it. And in here, all we need to do is put in square brackets around it, right? And then once we toggle it on, we have last year's date, but as a link. And depending on your Obsidian configuration, if you have a daily note for this exact date, once you click it, it'll take you there. We're gonna explore a bunch of cool things we can do with this in the next chapter, but some examples are, for instance, on our daily notes, we can have a on this day line that pulls a daily note of that exact date but from last year. That is super helpful, and I use it a lot to kind of see what my thoughts were right at that time last year. I also use it for my weekly planning, which I typically do on Mondays. So I like to have a link on the previous Monday and the following Monday so that when I'm browsing my weekly reviews, I can just bounce between the two at the click of a button. I do the same for the daily notes, but I'm gonna get to all of that in the next chapter of this video. But for now, let's look at TP file. So I'm gonna make a new page. I'm gonna title it TP file. I only use three functions here and they all go together right after the YAML header. And the first one is TP file creation date. And I'm going to close it. And when I activate it, it's going to give me the file creation date for the specific file. In this case, it's today at 7.33, which is the exact time right now. And we just type that here since I'm going to show you three different ones. The next one is last modified. And it looks like this, tp file last modified. Close. And if I toggle this on, you can see that I created the file at 7.33 and the last time I modified it was 7.37. And then we have one more here, which is file folder. And we have just a very simple TP file for that one as well, it's TP file folder. So now if I come here and I toggle it on, we're not gonna have anything here because we're not in the folder. So then if I move the TP file into say the scripts folder and I refresh this, you're gonna see that it tells us we're on the scripts folder. Okay, so before moving on to the next chapter, I just wanna show you guys TP web. This is another internal function of Templar that pulls either a random image or a random quote from the web. I don't use the image feature, but I do use the quote for my journals as it's a nice low effort way to come across interesting quotes. Plus when I'm journaling, I tend to be a little more relaxed and susceptible to actually ponder on these different quotes. So I'm gonna create a new page, call it TP web. And the function for the daily quote is pretty simple, TP web daily quote. Then we just close it, come here and we activate it. And now we have a daily quote here. And every single time that we activate it, we should get a different quote. So if I do command Z again, then activate it again, getting a new quote here as well. This one by Shaquille Neal, that's the first time. Started hearing about money, 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 money. I just want to play the game, drink Pepsi and wear Reebok. Sometimes we don't get, we don't get lucky. All jokes aside, most of the time it's cool stuff that I'm happy to see. The only real mistake is the one from which you learn nothing. You know, fair. So TP web only has a daily quote and the random image. So for me, I like to use the daily quote. Maybe you'll like it as well. All right, so let's now look at some examples that I personally use. And like I said a few minutes ago, all of my daily notes have a line after the YAML header that says on this day. And it links to that exact same date of last year. And to do that, we need to come here into our daily note template, which mine is over here in the templates daily note. And I just have a line here that says on this day. And I have TP date now and then p minus one y 
and don't forget to turn it into a link. And there's one more thing we need to do. We need to come here to Templater and we need to trigger Templater on new file creation. So we're gonna to toggle this on and let's create our daily note for today. Today is July 22nd. So I'm gonna press here, create. And as you can see, we now have a link here for July 22nd of last year. And I don't have a note, so it's not gonna take me anywhere because I don't have a note on this vault for that day. But if you do, it's gonna take you to that specific daily note. Another thing that I really enjoy adding on the daily notes is a sort of breadcrumbs. So let me show you what I mean. I'm gonna come here to the daily note template and I pulled this from my main vault because it's annoying to type it out here. But all of this is really, is just a TP date now with a minus one, so for the day before, and with a plus one for the day after. And these arrows here are just a signal that, hey, this one will take you to the day before and this one to the day after. So let's pretend that we already have notes for the 23rd and for the 22nd. And now let's delete the 22nd, it's already deleted, and I'm gonna create a note there. So now we have a link here that'll take us to the daily note of the day before and the day after. And I do a similar but different thing for the weekly planning, which like I said, I typically do on Mondays. So just like the daily note, I also wanna have a link, but this time I wanna have that link for the current Monday. So if I'm here on a daily note, say I'm here on the 22nd, right? I wanna have a link here that takes me straight to the Monday of this week. So I like to have this week's Monday here as a link. So that every time I click here, it'll take me to this week's Monday. And Templater has a solution for this. And this is when TP date weekday comes into play. So now I put the usual Y, M, D. And now in here we can have numbers. And zero is for Monday, once for Tuesday, two is for Wednesday. And all that this does is it takes the date that we're on today. So today is July 22nd. And you can see here, this is the week we're on. And based on the number that you put here, so if I put a zero, it's gonna give me the Monday for this week. And the Monday for this week is July 18th. So let's see if it works. I'm gonna put in a zero and I'm gonna close all of this. And I forgot to even open it, I just realized. And now if I come here and I press option R to activate it, we now have a link to this week's Monday. And like I said, you can just change this here between zero and seven in seven being next week's Monday. So if I put in for Tuesday, option R, July 19th, as you can see here, July 19th is this week's Tuesday. So let's now do folder automation. I'm gonna create a new folder here and I'm gonna title it courses. So new folder, courses. And I'm gonna create a new template and I'm gonna title it courses template. And I'm gonna grab this here from TP file. And let's pretend we want a YAML header here. Let's put some typical stuff here on the YAML header, close it, and now let's say that we want this to show up on every file that we create inside the courses folder. So now we can come back here into the templater settings and in here folder templates, we need to create a new folder. So I'm gonna tell it to look for the courses folder and the template will be courses template. And once we exit out of it and we come here to the courses folder and we add a new note, we now have the template that we just created applied to it. And the point of this is so that every folder in your vault has a predetermined template because you're not gonna wanna have the same template going for your movies folder as you want for your evergreen or your articles folder. So for instance, this one here is for our courses folder, but say that we have an articles folder and then in here we add an articles template. And these two can be as different or as similar as you want them to be. So let's say that actually in the courses template, the alias doesn't make a lot of sense because you're not gonna wanna call your courses anything different than their actual name, but for the articles, it actually makes more sense. So you can keep an alias here, but not on the courses. And as always, these can be as complex as you want them to be. Maybe you wanna have a bunch of TP dates and TP file for specific templates only. And then you can come here to the templater settings and then you assign more and more with the plus sign. So in here, you're just gonna add, in this case, articles, and it has its own dedicated template. So in here, articles template. And then you can just keep adding more and more customized templates for every folder in your vault. I also wanna talk about using the hotkey functions in Templater. Although these are simple, these are a great quality of life feature as you can assign different hotkeys for basically anything. In the data view video, we built up a data view table with rankings for different books. So we assigned different templates inside here for a star symbol. So in here, five stars, we have a five star symbol and we assigned it via command five. So when I press command five, we have the star symbols. Another use case for the hotkeys is to have a shortcut for each of the templates 
that you don't want to use in a folder structure. For instance, I have a template for the people page that gets toggled by option P. I have another for meetings for option M, etc. And this is good because I don't want to have all my authors inside an author folder. If you do, then the author folder is more straightforward. And this brings me to perhaps the most common way that I use Templater, which is to apply my default template. This is a template that I use on every note that I create spontaneously. And by this, I mean notes that I don't want organized in a folder structure, because as we just went over it, the notes that are going into a specific folder have a specific template. So just like all of these other templates, I also have a default template inside the templates folder. So I can come here and create a new note, which will be called default template. And I'm going to pull this from my main vault, which I'll also leave in the description. And I'm not going to go over this in detail, but really quickly, all that this here is, is the YAML header. So we have tags, aliases, last modified, created title. And this bit here prompts me to add a title before the note even gets created and uses it to fill all of these parameters. And we're going to take a look at how this works. So for that, we need to come back here into the Templater plugin settings. And we're not going to go into the folder templates. We're going to come here to add new hotkey. And I'm going to call this one here the default template. And for the hotkey, I'm going to choose Command M. And I chose this because when I create a new note, I press Command N. So it's convenient that the letter M is right next to it. So let's see this in action. I'm going to come here and close out of this. So I'm going to press Command N for a new note, followed by Command M. And now it's asking me for a title. I'm going to put in example file. And now, as you can see, it filled up a bunch of stuff for me. So we have title, created, last modified, aliases, tags. And then I just like to have the actual title over here as header one. I'm sure there's a more automated way of doing this so you don't have to press the letter M next to N every time, but it's so easy and I'm so used to it that I really haven't felt the need to search for an alternative. All right, so before we finish up, I want to go over two things, and one of them is Templater's GitHub. It's extremely active, and the best part of it is that there's a bunch of people showcasing what they have done with Templater. I'm going to leave a link in the description for you guys to check out what others have created. It's important to note, however, that unless you understand what you're putting into your vault, you shouldn't just blindly copy and paste what you find there. And lastly, let me know how you're using it, as I always like to see what others are using Templater for. This video was not exhaustive at all, and let me know if you want a more advanced video covering user scripts and the moment object. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.